Today, we're going to talk about Lithuania. There are numerous artifacts of the Soviet time in this country, such as bunkers and museums, but there is also a lot more, such as stunning churches, monasteries, and palaces. There is a lot to see in this country, from the capital city of Vilnius, from wide open landscapes like the Koronian Spit, and a surprising amount of eccentric and interesting institutions like the Beekeeping Museum and the Money Museum. Several locations in the country have been designated as UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and wherever you go, you will encounter winding cobblestone alleyways, lovely local markets, and spectacular red brick buildings. So, we came up with the top five things that you can do in Lithuania that will make your visit worth it. Number five, leave a cross at the Hill of Crosses. The Hill of Crosses is a small promontory close to the city of Sholay. It's a symbol of defiance and a pilgrimage place. On this low hill, over 100,000 crosses have been placed many of which are strung with rosary beads that rustle quietly in the breeze. The custom began with the 1831 uprising and peaked in the 1960s to defy anti-religious Soviet authority. Locals crept here at night to lay crosses, irritating their captors. Despite the high penalties for being caught, repeated attempts to bulldoze the hill in the 1960s and 1970s did not prevent villagers from planting crosses here. Today, it is illegal to remove a cross from the location, and any visitor is welcome to place a cross, but it has to be of a certain size. Near the visitor center, enterprising sellers sell basic wooden crucifixes and loan marker pens for believers to write a family member name, prayer, or desire onto the cross before placing it in the soil. The Hill of Crosses also serves as a memorial for people who gave up their lives for the country as a result of the uprisings and other civil unrest over the years. Number four, enter through the Gates of Dawn. The Gate of Dawn was one of nine city gates that guarded Vilnius, Lithuania as part of its 16th century city wall. The Gate of Dawn is one of the city's most prominent cultural landmarks and the sole remaining city gate. The other eight were destroyed by the Russians in the 18th century. The Gate of Dawn, like many other such gates, has a chapel, but it is the icon of the Blessed Virgin Mary placed in the chapel that distinguishes it. This artwork, known as the Vilnius Madonna by some, is cherished by Orthodox and Roman Catholic believers, with many believing it was the chapel that prevented it from any massive destruction. This late classical style gate still stands at the entrance to the old town, protecting the valuable painting within. The chapel, right above the gate's arch, also serves as a center of worship, hosting eight yearly feast days, as well as group prayers for the city, mass, and confession. You can climb the stairway to the chapel, but please keep in mind that photography is not permitted during services before exploring the church at the bottom. Walking through the Gate of Dawn, which now is solely a house of prayer, is an excellent way to begin any tour of medieval Vilnius. Number three, experience the enormity of the Palace of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania. If you only have time to visit one museum in Vilnius, it has to be this one. The latest of a line of fortified palaces that have been modified, destroyed, and rebuilt on the same location since the 4th century AD. Built for the 17th century Grand Dukes, the Baroque Palace has been meticulously restored to contain an intriguing museum of art and history. Visitors with a few hours to spare can pay full entry and explore four routes along with Lithuanian history. Otherwise, choose one or two. Route 1 takes you on a journey through two millennia of Lithuanian history. Visitors can view the bones of successive episodes in the history of the building and the nation as they are guided through the strata of the palace's foundations. The second path takes you through the Grand Duchy's magnificently restored ceremonial halls. Complete with the throne's room crimson velvet and amazing wooden ceilings, 
while routes three and four lead you through a thicket of halberds and swords going back to the reign of the Grand Dukes. The shining white building is a powerful emblem of Lithuania's reborn independence and definitely worth a visit. Number two, visit Museum of Genocide Victims. The former KGB headquarters and the old Getsipo in Vilnius hold a museum dedicated to hundreds of members of the Lithuanian resistance who were executed, imprisoned, or deported by the Soviet Union between World War II and the 1960s. Blacklit images, wooden annexes, and a disorienting arrangement heighten the effect of graphically depicted historical horrors. The descent to the prison cells, which are specifically padded to muffle sounds from within, is the most disturbing. More than 1,000 captives were shot or stabbed in the head between 1944 and the 1960s. Messages of sorrow and defiance left by prisoners awaiting death are still engraved on the cell walls. The building is adorned with memorial plaques honoring the dead. The former inner KGB prison, saved on the same level as it was left by the Soviet security staff, is the most important section of the museum's displays. Visitors are greeted by prison cells, solitary confinement cells, exercise areas for convicts, and other unique facilities. They can also view the display that has been set up in the former execution room. The museum organizes and displays travel exhibitions, as well as educational seminars, documentary screenings, themed evenings, and commemorations. In a small bookshop, you can purchase booklets, books, and other products in Lithuanian and foreign languages from the Genocide and Resistance Research Center of Lithuania. The museum also has a section dedicated to Jewish ghettos and the era during the Holocaust. There's a lot to learn about the past once you step inside and about the circumstances that led to such horrific outcomes. Number one, take a stroll in Vilnius Old Town. It is said that while hunting near the confluence of the Vilnia and Neres rivers, Grand Duke Jeremias had a dream in which a gigantic iron wolf perched on the top of a hill howled as strong and loud as a hundred wolves. The pagan priest saw the wolf as a castle and that would be built on this place to become the capital of the Lithuanian lands. Thus, Jedimenius founded the city and called it after the river, following the wishes of the gods. The old town of Vilnius, Sena Maestis, is one of Northern Europe's largest surviving medieval towns. Some of the continent's greatest architectural styles, Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque, and Neoclassical exist and complement one another here. All of the structures here are centered on a major piazza and there are cobblestone streets studded with bars and cafes. Pili Street is the primary thoroughfare through Old Town. It spans from Cathedral Square to Town Hall Square and leads to a variety of churches, notably St. Anne's and St. Francis of Assisi's. The latter is home to the Vilnius Town Hall, a classical style structure completed in 1799. Visit Jediminias Tower, which stands on a green slope near the river and serves as a reminder of the first fortress constructed here in the 15th century. The royal palace buildings and the cathedral where Lithuania's Reverend Grand Duchess Barbara Radziwill is buried is on the ground below. If you want to see Vilnius's more unconventional side, take a journey through the self-proclaimed Republic of Upius the city's bohemian and creative area. Festivals, music, art, and theater fill the streets. Theaters and galleries of Vilnius throughout the warmer months. Vilnius is a great example of a European city that grew up with influences from many different cultures, faiths, and languages, and has been carefully maintained. It affected the cultural and architectural development of much of Eastern Europe as a result. Starting with the capital, Vilnius, Lithuania makes you fall in love with it. 
With its diverse culture and the enormity of the things to do and the places to cover, Lithuania will keep you occupied during your holiday and you'd surely come back home without having to fully experience the enormity of it. Which is also not a terrible thing, because who wouldn't want to come here again? Would you want to? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, where to next?